Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and you're watching Paleo 101, where we talk about fossils, minerals, and everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. Well, today episode on Georgia rocks and minerals, we're going to be talking about the Kanasaka Shale Formation and the Cambrian fossils. So the Kanasaka Shale Formation runs through Georgia, Alabama, and parts of Mississippi. This is a middle to upper Cambrian deposit of shale and mudstone, and this is about 505 to 497 million years old. This deposit was deposited during a shallow ocean event. Uh, down a shallow ocean environment. So you have many different creatures living in the bottom of an ocean and living in those types of environments, such as the famous trilobites. And the trilobites that occur are different, uh, different species, but they vary from the formation. Um, one formation is about 505, so that takes you back to the middle Cambrian. And the other formation is 497 million years old, which, take you, which takes you back to the upper Cambrian, which is very close to the Ordovician Cambrian um, where they meet, where the Cambrian meets the Ordovician. It gets very close to the Ordovician age. And so the deposits are um, composed of this, um, this thin, very soft shale and mudstone. Um, you may not, oh, there it is. And it can, and it, it, the colors are probably um, grayish and brownish color. So it's a very thin and very dusty like um, shale and mudstone. And inside of that mudstone occurs the trilobites. Now, this, now, there are different deposits that occur of the, of the Conestoga Shale. One deposit um, occurs in Alabama along the Coosa River, um, and, and this occurs very close to the very river, so the Coosa River deposits, and this composed of shale and chert nodules, and you'll find trilobites and other kinds of fossils. And so this is one fossil. This is an Oenelids trilobite. This is a pygidium, and this particular species is a little bit rarer than other trilobites. That are found in the um, in the Kanasaka Shale in the Middle Cambrian deposits. You'll also find things like um, like a trilobite species known as Erethia antiquata, which is the most abundant species in the Middle Cambrian deposits of the Kanasaka Shale, and this is one that was discovered in Georgia and Rome. Um, this is Erethia antiquata, which looks very similar to Erethia um, kingi, which occurs in the Middle Cambrian deposits of the Wheeler Shale Formation in Utah, in Delta, Utah. And you'll not only you'll find trilobites in the middle Cambrian deposits of the Conestoga Shale, but you'll also find some things like a protomedusa, which is thought to have been a long time as an ancient jellyfish, but it's actually been redescribed as a fossil sponge, one of these early fossil sponge. And they occur in these chert nodules. So that right there is Bruxella. It was, um, described by Charles Wal Charles Darlittle Walcott, the same paleontologist who named and described the, um, uh, the, the Burgess Shell Formation in Canada. And he also described these things. They were known as Bruxellas and they are known as fossil sponges in, instead of um, fossilized jellyfish known as protomedusa. They occur in the chert nodules of the Kanasaka Shale and they're known from Alabama and they're found along the Coosa River. And they're known from the, um, the Kanasaka Shale Formation Middle Cambrian deposits of Floyd, Georgia. And this particular specimen is found in Floyd, Georgia. And there are other specimens that are much well preserved in this one. This is only one specimen that I have of Bruxella. And like I said, it's a fossilized sponge. And you'll find it along the rivers of Georgia and Alabama. Not only will you find um, Bruxellas and other trilobite species, but you'll also find these weird looking animals and these markings. There are known from the Middle Cambrian deposits um, of the Conestoga Shale Formation and other, middle, and other deposits around the United States and parts of the world. But that right there, you can see these small little markings. This is a animal called a hyalith. And it, it looked like this specimen, it looked like this. For a long time, we uh, had no idea what were. We thought that they were probably remains of cephalopods, but it turns out that they were actually relatives of brachiopods living today. Um, brachiopods are known from the Middle Cambrian. They first started out in the Cambrian and diversified during the Paleozoic, and um, and still are still still live today. Um, one living fossil is known from Lingula. That's that is known from the Cretaceous deposits. But enough with the Cretaceous. We're on the Cambrian deposits. So brachy this is probably related to today's brachiopods that occurred in the that first started out in the Cambrian. And they're weird looking fossils. They're cone shaped deposit. They're cone shaped markings that you'll find in the rocks of the Conestoga Shell formations in Georgia. And they're very weird, very weird looking. 
Um, this particular um, specimen occurs in Floyd, Georgia. This particular specimen was found in Floyd, Georgia. And um, it's a little bit older. So the trilobites that occur in Georgia are known from the Middle Cambrian and Upper Cambrian deposits. I've only been able to go into the Upper Cambrian deposits, which is 497 million years old. But the oldest trilobites are known from the Middle Cambrian deposits of the Kanasaka Shell Formation. And as I said, it, uh, um, the specimens or the species that occur is Erethia antiquata and um, some Olenella trilobites that are found. I've only been able to search into the Kanasaka shell from the upper Cambrian deposits. And I found things that were very, very interesting and weird looking. So this particular species you'll find in the Kanasaka shell, the upper Cambrian portion is called, um, you may not be able to see here, but it's called um, Espelasus brachyfastus trilobites. And they're weird looking. They're Oh, they're really known from the Upper Cambrian deposits of the Kanasaka Shale. So that's a particular specimen that I found. Um, here's the other side. Here's the, that's, that's, that's the positive, and here's the negative side. You may be able to see here. So that's this, spe um, this particular species known as Espelasus brachyfastus, and they occur in numbers. In fact, the death rates, the, you, you can usually break open the shale, and you'll find hundreds of these body masses of Aspelasis trilobites. So let's say you break it open a shell of some of these uh, of, of parts of the Upper Cambrian of the Kanasaga, they occur in numbers. They, they, they have body clusters. And how these animals died was there was a gigantic mudslide. And as these animals were scurrying on the ocean bottom, there was a mudslide and covered these animals very quickly to the point where there are only soft bodied remains. So usually trilobites remains occur in hard parts and you usually find their molts. But these particular uh, trilobite specimens are soft bodied and you usually will find soft bodied remains. So not only will you just not find the trilobite molts, but you'll also find things like sponges and things of that nature. But the most common fossil you'll find are the Espelasus brachyfaxis trilobites that I found in the upper Cambrian deposits of the Kanasaka Shale. And it's really interesting to actually go and look at these fossils and understand what they are. You're literally digging in an ancient, in, an ancient ocean that's so 497 million years old. And so this occurred as the, the, the rocks that you have today occurred or are now uplifted because of the Appalachian Mountains when they were being built. It rose that particular sea bottom off the ocean floor and that allowed the sediments to be deposited and allowed the, and allowed the, uh, the sediments of the, of the shell and mudstones to be exposed above sea level. And so you usually will go into a river or a creek and you usually will find exposure to these rocks. And if you go into the exposures, you will lose, you can, the, sail, the, the cool thing about the shell is it's that it's very soft that you can usually use a pick knife and open the shell up and you usually will find a trilobite impression on it. And so the shell is very soft and it's very dusty. Um, here's another specimen of a trilobite. You may not be able to see here, but there it is right there. The shale is very dark, so um, I'll probably get another particular specimen so you can see it very well. But I found this particular specimen. Hopefully you may be able to see it on this. But that is uh, the positive and negative of the soft body remains of the Espelasis brachyfastus trilobites that I found on May 7th of 20, 2018. So I actually recently just went out in the field um, helping a couple of fossil hunters to look at these trilobites. They've never been out in the Kanasaga. They've never actually found the trilobites here in Georgia. And so I led them out to Chatsworth, Georgia and actually look and find these fossils, split open the shale and see some of the soft bite remains of these trilobites. And sometimes maybe around five minutes, you'll come back with at least 16 or 20 different trilobite um, uh, specimens. And so that's exactly what I did. I cracked open the shell and you usually will find some of these trilobites and they're very interesting in their soft bodied remains. See, as trilobites molt, they, they're, um, they're get, their bodies are disarticulated, which means they fall apart over a long period of time. When trilobites molt their uh, exoskeletons, they break along sutures. So you'll usually find just bits and pieces of their bodies, but sometimes you'll find complete trilobite remains, and I found plenty of those. And so some of the specimens uh, I, that I have showed you um, are complete specimens, but you usually will just find bits and pieces of their molts because they occur and they, they molt in sutures. And so here's a particular specimen that I found from the Kanasaka Shale. So it's right there. 
probably can't see because the lighting is not that good, but uh, it's a complete trilobite specimen right there. Let me get up close to the camera. And there it is right there. That is Espelastus brachyphasis trilobite. And that, and that I found just Monday. And it's it's a really interesting thing to actually go out and look for these fossils. And it's just maybe a, maybe a few hours away from where I live. And so the Cambrian deposits here are really interesting. In Alabama and Georgia in the middle of Cambrian, you'll find um, shale and siliceous deposits of chert, which occurs and which is where you'll find the uh, Bruxellas and hyaliths. But in the upper Cambrian deposits, you'll find uh, these soft bodied remains of trilobites called Aspelaspis. You'll also find these weird looking trilobites called Gnostids. And I actually have a picture of an agnostic trilobite and what it looks like. And so here, right here is an agnostic trilobite and they have, a, it's very um, hard to tell which, which part is the head and which part is the tail of the pygidium. Um, these trilobites are about a millimeter long and they're very small, but they're also quite rare. Um, Glyptoagnosis reticulatus is known from the plebeian stage of the, of the upper Cambrian deposits, and that is known as the index fossil. Glyptoagnosis is only found in Cambrian deposits on upper Cambrian deposits. So if you find Glyptoagnosis reticulatus, you'll definitely know that that particular specimen is known from the upper Cambrian, or you that particular trilobite, agnostic trilobite will tell you that uh, you, you are in rocks that are about in the upper Cambrian age. And so the fossils here are really interesting. You'll find uh, you'll find agnostic trilobites, you'll find fossilized sponges. Um, some of the specimens that occur in this particular site of the upper Cambrian are known from uh, the, the Burgess Shale, the famous Burgess Shale deposits in Canada, which occur in the lower Cambrian, which is about 400, uh, 541 million years ago um, old, which is uh, right when the Cambrian started to occur, you know, the famous Cambrian explosion that we all know, which occurred in, um, in the lower Cambrian deposits. And you'll, you will sometimes find the same, um, the same fossils found in the Burgess Shale here in Georgia. And so they're soft-bodied remains. And how these soft body remains occur is you have to live or not necessarily live, but the oxygen level has to be very low for these animals to, um, to preserve their soft body remains. So because they have, because the oxygen level is very low in these oceans, the soft bodies, the soft body remains of these organisms get preserved very well. And so you'll usually just open up a piece of shell and you usually will find an imprint or the actual molts themselves. And because of the molts or because of these, um, the low oxygen levels, during that particular time, you will actually find the soft body remains of the, some of these trilobites and other sponges. This is, this is the reason why you have sponges and many different other fossils that are found. And so I'm pretty sure that there are other fossils that are found in the Conestoga Shale in which I was in the Upper Cambrian portion, but you'll also find some other particular rare specimens like maybe sponges, I'm hoping maybe, just maybe, a, a nominal carrot like animal um, that occurs in the Burgess Shale and other Cambrian deposits around the world. Maybe, maybe not, but you know, the more we look, the more we find, we'll start to understand what or what animals and what fauna in which they lived in. And so this is Paleo 101, and I'll see you later with another video.